What is up? It's Miguel from Run With It, and you are watching another episode of the Art Can Change the World series. It's where we interview artists and those who work in the arts world to hear stories of how art could actually change the world. And today we are here with Chris Hagarian. And uh, Chris, why don't you let them know uh, what you do in the arts world? <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. Thanks no problem, for hitting man. me up for this. And uh, I'm happy we're here in yeah. uh, the TV studio at KCPT, which is also home of 90.9 The Bridge. Yeah, a few um, things going on here. A couple things, yeah. There's Big Bird and all sorts of stuff around <laughs> here. Um, you want to know what I do yeah. in the arts you world? You can break in all the things, yeah, all I, of them. <laughs> I work for Ink Magazine, which is a, a weekly magazine here in Kansas City uh, that tries to tell people what, what cool things to do and where to go, what shows to see, if there's a cool new restaurant, um, if people in the community are doing things that, of note. And um, with them, I get to work on a lot of our music stuff. Um, I get to work on with concert promoters to get us involved with a concert. This past 10 days, it's been all Radiohead. <laughs> All radio head conversations, yeah. Right <laughs> the on sales this week, uh, tomorrow, and uh, people. The text I just got a second ago is more about Radiohead. It's constant Radiohead, which is awesome. It's awesome that I get to have conversations about Radiohead for work. Right. So I, I get to have work with promoters, marketing people on that, and then it's it's splintered into the creation of Middle of the Map Festival, mm -hmm. which wearing a shirt from. Well done. Uh, well yeah. Done. Uh, usually a walking billboard. Uh, <laughs> it's the middle of the map was a festival we, we created, um, me and Nathan Roosh of The Record Machine. Um, it, it, we, our first year was 2011. And uh, it's become this thing. It's seven years old now. And each year, you know, have about 100 bands come uh, from all around the world, as well as lots of Kansas City bands. And uh, I work on that. I work on that festival. And that, that music festival splintered into a film festival and then also into a bit of an art culture tech yeah. forum event. Um, in addition to the ink stuff and Mill of Map, um, I'm on the board of Boulevardia, which is uh, where we have our fourth year, that, that festival here in town. Uh, 45,000 people come, uh, 40 bands, three stages. Um, get to work with them on all the music for that. And then different people around town I get to have different partnerships with. I have partnerships with the Kansas City Royals. We do a concert series out there that you guys played yeah. uh, last year. It was a lot it was of fun. Super fun. Um, I have a, a, a partnership with the Country Club Plaza for the Plaza Art Fair, which happens every September, which you played last year. I forgot you did that as well. <laughs> yeah. It's like start adding all the things. Um, you know, and over time we've done stuff. I had a relationship with Sporting. We did a series out there mm -hmm. the first season they were there. Um, you know, just I'm constantly called upon to help put bands in places, unique unique places, usually, not your typical stuff. Oh, I have a radio show, too. Oh, that's right. The 8160. Yeah. yeah. I want to so, get that on the list. <laughs> as we're sitting here uh, in this station, um, I have a radio show on 90.9 The Bridge called The 8160, which you've been on. Yeah. And uh, a lot of patterns here. And um, <laughs> it's uh, every Tuesday night here in Kansas City uh, at 6 p.m., uh, you can stream it online uh, live or catch up on the podcasts. Um, but it, the idea of it was 8160, 60 minutes of music from the 816. Oh. If you're watching this and you aren't from here, 816 is our area code. That's and, a thing uh, for us. It's a thing for It us. is a thing. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, we're entering our third year, mm -hmm. and it's been a lot of fun. So That's a great show, man. It Thank you. It was fun being on there. Uh, yeah, the I, I try to make it. it, I try to, I put a lot into it and try to make it work to promote Local music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, you love music. I do. <laughs> You're yeah. diving deep in this world. Yeah, it'd be hard so, to do this if I didn't. <laughs> so I, I'm curious to hear, uh, you know, if you could share maybe a story or two of how, how music, how art has impacted you, uh, maybe even how that drove uh, to be so deep in the music Yeah. World. You know, to go back to that, the idea of middle, mm -hmm. the conversation, you know, I'd been to... You know, you've been, uh, I've been to Bonnaroo and I've been to South by Southwest and Austin City Limits Festival and Bumbershoot and Vegas and uh, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. I've done all that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, back in 2010, Nathan Roosh, who owns the record machine, a Kansas City based record label, came in. We had a meeting and he said those, those faithful words. He's like, What do you think about throwing a music festival? <laughs> 
<laughs> Changed a whole lot. For and me. it really was like the red pill or the blue pill. Really? Okay. For me, and it's 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 this entire trajectory of no days off, <laughs> way less sleep, but a really interesting new life. You know, Nathan and I had gone to festivals all around the country mm -hmm. and seen things, and then we tried to figure out what we could do to make it cool here. Mm -hmm. And we had friends like Steve Tulipana and Sean Sherrill own Record Bar, mm -hmm. and Dallas and Timmy Gutschenritter own, own The Riot Room. And our, at the time, our friends, uh, Rob and Emo were running the Beaumont Club. Okay. And you know, it just, all of our friends own these bars. And we thought, let's try and create something like a, a teeny tiny, and I hate even saying it, a teeny tiny little baby South By. Yeah. Like South By Southwest in Austin, Texas. And put a bunch of cool bands in our, the venues that our friends own. It'll help get exposure for the bands. It'll help our friends with mm -hmm. their businesses. And then we'll bring in some bigger acts. We'll go sell some sponsorships and get some money. And then bring in bands like Two Door Cinema Club, who were on the way to Coachella, and Daniel Johnson, who was an icon. And the Ravenettes played that first year. And I can't remember who else played that first year. We had 50 bands play that first year. And last year we had about 135. Yeah. Uh, so Was there a moment where during the festival, like for you, that just while you were there that it all kind of hit you or uh, it was uh, I, like watching your kids first step <laughs> there was this moment that, and it still just guts me it was uh, it was 2012 we had the band fun they mm -hmm. had the huge song we are young yeah. it was the number one song in America for six weeks in 2012 we were the third week of that middle was the third week like Lightning in a bottle, winning lottery ticket, <laughs> Willy Wonka pass, like all those things. And it's so hard to get that, but we got mm -hmm. so lucky and uh, it worked. That's awesome. But so I was walking through the venue, doors had just opened. I think making movies were getting ready to start playing, a local, awesome. great Kansas City local yeah, band. <laughs> and um, I was walking to the back of the house and six people all held up a shot and they did a cheers and a toast and they're like to the middle of the map. And I was just a puddle. <laughs> it was just, because it's this thing you live and die with yeah. every day. And uh, to see that it actually yeah, means so, to, something to so deep. Six strangers. That's, the, that's my favorite thing. That and when I see a stranger in the middle of my t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, those are my, those are awesome things. You've hit on this a lot in how it's impacted you personally, but... Is there another story that sticks out to you where you've seen music or art yeah, I mean, uh, impact the, somebody else? I, the other side of it, not directly with the festival, but with like things like the Royals game. Clearly, you buy a Royals ticket, you go to see the Royals play, mm -hmm. and of late, that's that's way, it's a lot cooler than it was in 2011. Yeah, way cooler. When we started this concert <laughs> series. Now, you know, two World Series under the belt. Uh, but what, what was cool about the Royals, what's cool about Plaza Art Fair, what was cool about sporting was you get to put bands like yours mm -hmm. in front of an audience that would never otherwise, mm -hmm. for the most part, come see you play record bar. Exactly, yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's just, to, you know, just reaching one person. And uh, two, two side notes on that. Uh, both happened at the Royal Stadium. Um, the Fantastics, great, soulful, hip-hop, mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> crossover act. One of the hardest-working uh, party bands in Kansas City uh, <laughs> at the Royal Stadium. They played out there, same stage you did, mm -hmm. and they're crushing it. Like, Kemet's got the crowd bouncing, and him and Lee have the are hopping along like crazy. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the set, 70 year old white guy walks up to the stage, and, it, and I'm watching, I'm right there by the soundboard, and says to Kemet, that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. That's awesome. How, where else could that happen? Right? You know, like it was, <laughs> it was a seven-year-old dude hanging out at the ball game because he wants to see the Royals play. Yeah. Probably got a barbecue sandwich, came over and sat down at the picnic table, and was moved enough to go up and say that to the, to, to awesome. Kemet. And then um, similar thing um, again at the Royals game. Um, the bands had in the, in the past got a suite. You got a suite when you played. Mm -hmm. And um, we were hanging out in the suite, and I had on a Beautiful Bodies t-shirt. Yeah. And this gentleman walked past, another, again, another old white dude. And he walked past, 
And he said, do you, are you, do you work with that band? Are you in that band? He's like, and I said, no, I, I said, I work with them sometimes. Mm. And I said, how do you know them? He's like, well, I saw them at Plaza Art Fair. That's awesome. And I'm like, there it is again. <laughs> And it's just, you know, another case where this dude would have never seen them before. Yeah. Why would he have go, have seen them otherwise? But he was probably down there looking at art, mm-hmm. going to get a drink and a, a nice meal somewhere on the plaza. And, and like, stumbled minute. across the beautiful bodies pouring out their souls on stage at Plaza Art Fair. And those are the things that, like, got you. That's awesome. Well, thanks again for sharing. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, Feel free to let our followers know uh, right over there where they can uh, listen to the show or yeah. anything about the festival. So, um, so on, on, uh, for Middle of the Map, you can go to middleofmapfest.com. Actually, I think we bought MOTMKC now uh, as our redirect. And then Facebook, we're all on there. The Bridge, uh, it, the station is 90.9 The Bridge. The show is called The 8160. Again, every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and then Boulevardia happens every June. It's Father's Day weekend. Uh, be a good time down in the uh, Stockyards District in downtown Kansas City. But uh, thanks again. No problem, man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. Uh, more to come from the Art Can Change the World series.